reverse mortgage. This is a financial term that has changed the game for years when it comes to home financing. And in all honesty, most of you watching this video may be completely clueless on how much you've been missing out on. If you're a homeowner, you've probably heard of it, but let's talk about it. How does a reverse mortgage work? Trust me, you're in for a treat because in this video, not only will I break it down for you, but you'll learn all the other things you need to know if you ever want to apply for this type of mortgage. So without wasting any more time, let's get started with what is a reverse mortgage? Reverse mortgage is basically a loan against your home that you don't have to pay back as long as you're still living in it. Sounds pretty sweet, right? But there's a catch. The longer you stay in your home, the more debt you accumulate. Unlike a regular mortgage where you make monthly payments and your equity increases, a reverse mortgage is the complete opposite. You get money from the lender and your debt increases, while your equity decreases. With this one, you can imagine riding on a seesaw, but instead of going up and down, it only goes down. The good news is that your income doesn't matter when it comes to getting a reverse mortgage. So if you're retired and living on a fixed income, this could be a great option for you. Plus, you don't have to worry about losing your home if you can't make the payments. Why? Because there are no monthly payments. Of course, there are pros and cons to everything and reverse mortgages are no exception. But if you're looking for a way to tap into your home's equity without having to sell or move, a reverse mortgage could be the answer. So now, how does a reverse mortgage work? It's a fairly simple process, really. First, you'll need to have a good chunk of equity in your home or have paid it off entirely. If you've got that covered, you can work with a reverse mortgage counselor to find a lender and a program that suits your needs. Once you've picked a loan program, it's time to apply. The lender will do a credit check and take a look at your property's title and value. If everything checks out, they'll fund the loan in one of three ways. A lump sum, a line of credit, or periodic payments. It's up to you to decide which option is best for you. Once you've got that cash in hand, it's time to spend it on whatever you need or want. Some loans come with restrictions on how you can use the funds, like the home improvements or renovations, but others are totally unrestricted. And don't worry about paying it back until you die or move out. At that point, you or your heirs can either repay the loan or sell the property to pay it off. Any money left over is yours to keep. That was pretty straightforward, wasn't it? But the real question is, who is eligible for a reverse mortgage? First off, the property you're mortgaging has to be your primary residence. You can't just slap a reverse mortgage on your vacation home in Maui and call it a day. Also, you need to either own the property outright or have at least 50% equity in it with no other primary liens. So you're up to your eyeballs in debt from a second mortgage or a haylock. You're out of luck, my friend. Is that it? Well, we're not done yet. Before we proceed, please like and subscribe to the channel so that you're always updated with our latest uploads. Share this with others so that it can spread to more people. Now going back, only certain types of properties qualify for government-backed reverse mortgages. Single-family homes? Check. Multi-unit properties with up to four units? Check. Manufactured homes built after June 1976? Check. Condos or townhomes? Check, check, and check. Finally, you'll need to sit through a riveting information session with a reverse mortgage counselor approved by the government, of course. And just like with any other mortgage, you'll need to stay current on property taxes homeowner's insurance, and keep your property in good condition. Remember, private reverse mortgages have their own set of requirements, so you'll want to check with your lender to see what's required. And if you're clear with that, let's now proceed with what are reverse mortgage borrowing limits? Now listen, if you're going with a private or proprietary reverse mortgage, there are no hard and fast limits on how much you can borrow. It all comes down to the lender you're working with and how much they're willing to lend you. Think of this like asking your grandma for money. She might give you $20 or $200, depending on how much she likes you. But if you're looking at a government-backed reverse mortgage program, things are a bit more regulated. You're not allowed to borrow up to the full appraised value of your home or the FHA's maximum claim amount of $765,600. Nope, you'll only be able to borrow a portion of your home's value. And don't forget that a chunk of that value is used to cover the loan expenses and lenders usually want a buffer in case property values drop. So how much you can borrow also depends on a few other factors, like your age, credit, and the loan's interest rate. Basically, the older you are and the higher your credit score, the more you'll be able to borrow. Long story short, if you're going with a private reverse mortgage, it's a bit of a free-for-all. But if you're using a government-backed program, there are some limits and restrictions to keep in mind. And now, assuming that you've actually considered this mortgage, you then need to ask yourself, 
How much will I owe on a reverse mortgage? To tell you honestly, it's not just the initial amount you borrow, there's a bit more to it. Your loan balance at the end of the loan will be the total amount of cash advances you've received, including any used to pay loan costs plus all the interest on them, up to the loan's non-recourse limit, aka the value of your home. So basically, the longer you have the reverse mortgage, the more interest will accumulate, which means you'll owe more in the end. If you opt for an adjustable rate reverse mortgage, the interest rate can vary based on changes in published indexes. But here's the kicker. The greater the loan's permissible interest rate adjustment, the lower its interest rate initially. In short, you'll get a bigger cash advance with this type of loan than you would with a loan that has a higher initial interest rate. I know, I know, it's like a roller coaster. Sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down. And of course, there's the good news. True reverse mortgages are non-recourse loans, which means that the lender can't come after anything other than your home to seek repayment. So they can go after your income, your assets, or even your heirs' finances. That's the relief, right? Just remember, you can never owe more than the value of your home at the time the loan is repaid. So even though the interest may add up, you're protected from owing more than your home is worth. So are you now interested in applying for a reverse mortgage? I thought you'd never budge. Here are three types of reverse mortgages. The first one is single purpose reverse mortgages. These types of loans are the cheapest of the reverse mortgage bunch and are offered by nonprofits and government bodies for specific purposes like home repairs or improvements. Think of it like a DIY loan, but instead of going to Home Depot, you can get the funds from the government. However, before you start planning your next home renovation project, keep in mind that these loans are only available in certain areas. I suggest doing your research and making sure you're eligible before getting too excited. But if you're eligible, a single-purpose reverse mortgage could be just the ticket to upgrade your home sweet home without breaking the bank. Home Equity Conversion Mortgages Backed by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, HECMs are a great option for those looking for more flexibility with their loan funds. Need to pay off some bills? Go for it! Want to take a trip to Bali? You got it! The possibilities are endless! But before you start packing your bags, keep in mind that HECMs can be more expensive than your run-of-the-mill mortgages. However, the trade-off is the ability to choose how you receive your funds. From lump sums to fixed monthly payments, or even a line of credit, it's all up to you. Proprietary Reverse Mortgages These are private loans that are backed by a government agency. Basically, they're the mavericks of the reverse mortgage world. While these loans can be a great option for those who don't qualify for other types of reverse mortgages, they do come with some risks. Since lenders set their own rules and fees, it can be a bit of a Wild West situation. And unfortunately, some less than savory folks see these loans as an opportunity to take advantage of unsuspecting seniors. So before you jump into a proprietary reverse mortgage, make sure you're working with a reputable lender. It might take a little more legwork, but it's worth it to protect yourself and your property's equity. The fact of the matter is, a reverse mortgage can be a useful tool for seniors who want to tap into their home equity, but you should understand the ins and outs of the loan before jumping in. By educating yourself, you'll be able to make an informed decision that will benefit you in the long run and ensure that you won't fall prey to unscrupulous lenders or scammers. After all, when it comes to your money and your future, it's better to be safe than sorry. What is your take on reverse mortgages? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. Also, help us reach more people by liking and subscribing to the channel. Thank you so much and we'll see you in the next one.